as an introverted kid, I remember feeling so safe inside it. So it's genuinely so long that I can hula hoop on the nose. <laughs> I'm just like, be that, you can't do that. <laughs> if you start investing in your mental and physical health from a younger age, then you're basically saving up for like in your 50s, 60s, 70s. Welcome to Rule Breaker. We're breaking the rules. And what rules are we breaking? That women come last. We're talking to first women today. Eshna Kuti, first Indian woman to hoop. And hoop like the way she does. It's not her hobby. It's her profession. Thanks very much. Thank you. I can never get this image out of my head of you hooping in a sari and all of us going, oh my God, how does she do it? How does she do it? I, uh, I think, um, I think when, when you fall in love with an art form so much, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, where you are, who you're with. Um, you're in that moment with that toy or object or gear that you're using, and and I think that's the beauty of really just being one with something. Um, and I decided to do it with like a, a very long piece of cloth. <laughs> you know, a friend of mine often says, less think, more moment. Is that how Ishna's life has been? Absolutely. I think no think, <laughs> more moments. Um, because I feel like I, I do and then I think about it later. And sometimes it really works in my favor because I'm very spontaneous. But Sometimes it also just completely backfires and then you kind of embrace everything with it. Yeah. So, you know, hula hooping, it's a story from the 60s. Yes. And it's a story that every time I tell a slightly older friend, I was like, oh, you know what? I, I watch Ishna and sometimes try my hand at hula hooping. She's like, oh, you know, we guys used to do it back in the day. Um, and it's a back. Yeah. And how? Yes. What do you think is going on there? I think um, I think things are anyway just coming back um, thanks to the internet. Um, roller skating is coming back, skateboarding and everything. Um, but I, I, I do believe that hula hooping was a lot more popular among the women in the 60s, um, 50s, especially Americans. And, um, and I think I noticed that also in my workshop because um, I either have like children coming in, like eight, nine year olds, or like women in their 60s. So I've had, you know, like grandmothers to like grandchildren coming together. And, um, and I think it's interesting how this one art form or like this one piece of plastic is bringing together generations as well. I love that. Yeah. It's also beating stereotypes. Yes. How? Yeah. Um, because age no bar, I think when you look at um, fitness, one just assumes you need to be at a certain age to do it. If you want to go to a gym, you're scared that you'll break your bones or you know, you'll crack something and you don't have that here. And also um, it allows for adults to feel like children and for children to actually look at the adults and go like, I'm doing it way better than you. <laughs> And so there's just suddenly you're in this room and everyone is just learning from each other and sharing that space as equals. Yeah. Yeah. It's also very sexy. Yes. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's sexy for those who can genuinely love their bodies. And it's, it can also be massively awkward for those who... Um, have a low body esteem and I think that's it's a good doorway to actually start to feel more confident and feel more comfortable in your skin as well. You've always been comfortable in your skin? No, no, I'm saying it from personal experience. Talk to us about it. I, I, I would say I'm still getting there with the comfort. I'm definitely, I'm comfortable with things I love about my body and also things that I'm just like, I'm okay with it, but I don't care so much. Um, but I think if I, I think the journey has just been, you know, the graph is going higher where um, I see myself feeling so much kindness and also forgiveness. 
um, towards my body and um, and the hula hoop teaches me that because I feel like when you initially because I was very scared of the idea of dancing I was always a sports kid um, I had an athletic build so I was just a lot more rigid and um, I used to look at dance like, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and also it was all the Shamak dance works kids just walking around like babes. And I couldn't pull that off because I was just very awkward and introverted. And so I was like, I don't like dance and I don't like dancers. What attitude the khate. And so I think I just also put them into a box. But when I discovered hooping, because it still felt athletic, it felt like gymnastics. I felt like I was doing tricks and, you know, still getting to be fit and all um, I picked it up and when you spin the hoop as an introverted kid um, I remember feeling so safe inside it I remember being inside that in that in that pipe and um, and just feeling like oh no one's actually watching me they're watching the hoop spin and and I found that very comforting because for once I could do some kind of a movement without feeling exposed so it felt like this nice uh, this nice little boundary that I could, like my, my own Lakshman Rekha. Yeah. And, and then through time and through the years, the more I did it, and if I showed it to a friend, um, or if I was in, I think, 11th grade, or, you know, I did it in like one of these class, like auditorium me and whatever. Um, where I, I remember this switch happening where I started realizing that, oh, wait, I think I'm finally ready to show myself as well and I'm finally ready for people to see me once in a while without the hula hoop as well but I think the hula hoop really gave me that courage it was just holding my hand in a way well I would have never thought yeah <laughs> and, and then and then I should add that I I fell in love with dancing as well and yeah. I have a lot of dancer friends and uh, and I started getting looked at as oh she's a dancer <laughs> <laughs> so give a yeah. circle I, I can say the hula hoop taught you some lessons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but tell me something, when you, when, you, when you think back and you say that you, know, you were this introvert, I find that really hard to believe. Um, and the reason I say that is that, was it a sense of release that this person who just had, it was perhaps all mush in the ability to go out and talk, was making choices that were silent or quieter, suddenly felt like, you know, you come alive when you are in front of, what, 5,000 people? And you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> this is not an easy yeah. switch. Not everybody makes that journey. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the kid in me would never believe that I decided to pick a profession that um, voluntarily exposed me to more human beings. Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but now there's AI just saying, <laughs> feel the relief. <laughs> Oops. Um, but at the same time, um, I think there's a huge part of me that's still an introvert. Um, and then there's this professional side of me that started, I think, just growing up a little bit as well and you get out of your comfort zone. I think college also just does that, right? You get exposed to people from different walks of life and um, it's such a diverse culture. And I went to Lady Sri Ram College, so all kinds of women. Um, and uh, Did that help or make it harder? It helped so much, you know, because we, I was in the dance society and uh, so because of fest season, we would go to almost 30 colleges, um, 40 colleges a month to perform and I got I got to see North Campus and I was like, thank God I didn't go to a oh co-ed. Oh God, boys exist. <laughs> <laughs> boys exist, they're studying together. <laughs> now we just, we, I, I mean, I think that's why like my love for saris because I feel like LSR girls or any girls college girls would just normalize wearing saris so to much. To college. Yeah. Yeah, just, I did that too. Um, Although mine had boys, but yeah, I did that too. Yeah. But it was but you went to a It was too hot to wear well. jeans. <laughs> just, my reasons were different. <laughs> Nice, but um, but yeah, I feel like just being in a girls' college made me very um, sensitive um, to what's going on around the world, and also just um, I think um, conscious and wanting to pick um, 
being authentic. I mean, of course, these are not things that are restricted only in a girls' college, but I feel like it did influence me in my friend circles and all influenced me. Studying psychology influenced me. Um, but I was talking about, yeah, the fest season, yeah. Basically, seeing North Campus and guys on campus, and I don't know how we got to this subject. Um, I think the question was about introverts. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> so yes, I think, um, College played a big role in me just coming out of my shell and um, and I think realizing that at the end of the day um, I do prefer quality over quantity and so I still have my three main friends and everything is with them and if they're not around then I'm not meeting anybody but at the same time uh, what the hula hoop exposed me to as well or introduced me to is people from from very interesting lifestyles. I got to meet, I got to meet you uh, through the hula hoop and I got to meet some very interesting human beings because I feel like hula hoops and just flow arts in general attract a very interesting, offbeat, quirky, I mean, you have to be a bit crazy to pick hula hoop as a hobby. Love crazy. <laughs> totally love it. And Shelly has a drum kit here. <laughs> so that, that checks it, but, um, so the people who were walking in were just so interesting that I was like, I need to step out more. I need to meet these people more. And they make me more extroverted. They make me want to do, um, to host jams, to host uh, community gatherings or like an after party or whatever, because I'm just like, I like you so much. <laughs> and yeah. also it's heavily, I mean, I guess the ratio, the gender ratio would be, um, there's a large, queer community, but also like among women, I think take up about 60-70% and they're, yeah, few men and the men are very, again, um, sensitive and not very uh, misogynistic or any of those kinds. So it's just a very warm community. So we know that you were, uh, or you have navigated being an introvert or continue to be sometimes, I mean, that, that, that's perfectly fine. The, the part that I want to spend some time on is asking you whether you were ever, um, did you self-reject your physical attributes growing up? It's something that happens a lot to women and the more I talk to women on Rule Breaker, I hear from them that no matter how they are now, however confident, that they've actually spent majority of their life self-rejecting. For sure. I think, um, yeah, my nose is something I was very conscious about. Um, it was, I used to think it was the size of my face itself. <laughs> and, um, and I would be teased about it a lot in school, college, college not so much. I was, yeah, just the general, general bullying that happens, right? So, like what? Um, just things about maybe I'm a liar, kiki naklam bhi ho jayegi, or, uh, yeah, just or comparing me to other actors or famous people who have like a really long nose or just whatever, Pinocchio, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and I remember I really took it personally and I didn't realize it till, you know, um, when I started being part of shoots or ads or this or that and, you know, even makeup artists would be like, Naak teedi hai tumhari. now we have to spend more time straightening it through the, yeah. I don't know, the contouring and stuff. And, um, and these are things that I would just silently um, internalize, but not really express it because you want to also come across as someone who's very, I don't care about these things. You know, they say, I'm, I'm cool, I'm cool with it, whatever, whatever. But, um, but yeah, I think weight was obviously something that I'd be conscious about, but that is something I'm not conscious about at all. And I think with the nose, I, truly embraced it because it's so it's genuinely so long that I can hula hoop on the nose <laughs> I'm just like be that you can't do that <laughs> and, and so uh, yeah I think I have overcome a couple of hurdles like these and in hindsight they feel very small but I I remember how much I would feel hurt by it as well not feeling pretty enough because you don't fit the conventional looks and now curly hair now curly hair is a thing but pehle to bhoot nahi bolte the um cuz it would just be flying <laughs> but it's wonderful yeah 
It's like I have always wished for curly hair, which yeah. I do have when yeah. it's not blow dry like this. I think just yeah, the grass is always greener on the other side, and no matter. I mean, I think you're beautiful, right? And it's just um, one of the things that it's hard for us to look at ourselves the way others would see us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. And so you know, uh, growing up, um, a lot of things lead us to different paths, like you said, the long nose story or the hair flying story. But we get very hardened by them, and then we say, "But you up the khati, you may badal ke sab kuch, right? Time for me to lead that change." What is that drive in you? Because hoop, uh, you know, hula hooping has become like your source of energy, but also your source of driving change. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think I used to trivialize hula hooping myself for the longest time because. um when it was just a hobby i would um yeah when it was a hobby i would keep it a secret because it was just something that i do silently in the bedroom no one needs to know i'm hula hooping that's why i'm not coming for your birthday <laughs> and um and then when i would tell friends as well that hey i'm i can't come because i wanted to hula hoop at home and then they just like stop making excuses who who the fuck hula hoops <laughs> and i didn't know how to explain it and so i would just kind of keep it to myself and um i remember it being trivialized so often where oh isn't that something that children do or isn't that something that like clowns and circus artists or whatever do essentially like i used to i used to yeah i used to again internalize the fact that oh it's you know i wish i had a cool hobby i wish i had something that um people think like wow you do that you're a, you're a mountaineer or you're you know a skydiver those are cool things and i was like why am i hula hooping it's not cool it's so lame <laughs> and so that was my um thought process throughout and so even when i started gaining popularity when the art form started gaining more uh, respect at least um for the lack of a better word um or you know like women coming to me and saying that hey this looks amazing or you're so graceful or all of that i would was completely discarded i would not believe it i just be like thank you and then they're lying um and i think um that journey has been the longest for me and one of the things i notice now what you mentioned with the drive is that um one is for myself also giving it the due respect that i have been given it for so many years yeah. but also um starting to really notice um the change around me and notice that it was it was this piece like it was this toy that basically brought thousands of women women thousands of women together to just you know embrace their bodies wear a sari and just dance around in it sari flow became more about you know just women feeling good and uh, it wasn't just about hula hooping it was about them doing back flips or yoga or whatever else that they were doing wearing a sari um i noticed change happened when i decided to do a few fundraisers during covid or pre covid as well and we making 5 lakhs easily every single time and i was like what's happening and there is change happening and why am i <coughs> trivializing something that people are not and they're listening and so i think uh, what i do want to do now or what i notice uh, myself evolve into is just um knowing that the why is not ki i'm teaching an art form and i'll i'll patle ho jao fit ho jao whatever it's genuinely about feeling joy and comfort around the body yeah. and to really just embrace the body so much like so if the longest time people will say वो क्या होता है हाँ वो तो मतलब आई एव सी आप माली हो क्या ये पाइप क्या है आप इलेक्ट्रीशियन इट्स जस्ट दे वुड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड पाइप कैसे आई ऑल्सो कोलैप्स इट एंड सो पीपल वुड ये रिंग क्या है मैडम सिक्योरिटी चेक नहीं जा सकते आप रुक जाओ सो आई जस्ट फेस सो मच हैसल जस्ट गेटिंग फ्रॉम ए टू बी थैंक्स टू यू आप आई एक्सपीरियंस डेली मेट्रो दिस जॉइंट हुप्स मी जस्ट हिटिंग एवरीबडी ऑन द वे Kisa, let's talk about some of the rules that we are fed, right? Uh, this is how you do things. This is how you sit. You don't hula hoop. You don't. Uh, you don't do back flips. I've seen you do those uh, cartwheels. Why are you upside that. down? <laughs> Why are you upside down? <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, 
women don't have a dearth of rules that they've been raised with. How do you think you're going to f change this, like break the toxic cycle? Mm, I think, um, I mean, at least like in my own personal corner of it, um, what I can do at least in the moment or continue doing is also just continue being myself and not fall into the bracket of because I also see the difference it makes when they witness another woman um, just unapologetically living her life and then that kind of inspires them. It inspires me when I witness another woman and that kind of creates a ripple effect. Um, I would say that's one. But also um, creating more spaces where this can happen in a, in a safe space. And so organizing more um, gatherings and um, events or whatever around it. Yeah. So the other thing that I always ask people here on the show is that how do you deal with money? This is paying off. You didn't think it would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a surprise that I'm here still doing this as bread and butter. I, I mean, yeah, I, I graduated in psychology and I completed my studies in expressive art therapy, really thinking that that will be my full-time profession and hooping will be like a side hustle, but it's the other way around where my uh, main income is through hula hooping and now expressive art therapy is my side hustle. When you start to like chase comfort and a comfortable lifestyle then you also end up spending more and then you realize oh shit we can't live in this world without money and so i can't be this good samarit samaritarian um just you know trying to do stuff pro bono trying to do barter trying to do this because it's my time it's my money i mean it's my time it's my effort um and it takes a lot of headspace as well and so i think i'm really starting to set stronger boundaries with um how I present myself to the world in a professional setting and um, quote my worth. And um, yeah, and I'm also, this year I started managing myself as well. And so that's been quite exciting because I really am taking the reins back into my hand. Which is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, health, I, you know, I, just, uh, I know that you do all of these antics, but they're really good for bones. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to pay off in the future. I'm going to um, live very, very long. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and you know, like the cartwheels are making sure that your shoulder strength is going to last you. Uh, so just want to get you to talk to women of your and our ages about why investing in health is like number one. Yeah, um, I think um, if you start investing in your mental and physical health from a younger age, then you're basically saving up for like in your 50s, 60s, 70s when you don't have like a, a back problem or a knee problem or other internal health issues. And that's something people don't realize because they're like, when you're 50, you'll know what you'll do, or whatever. You know, we'll just, that instant gratification is something that they want instantly, where they would rather save money now than spend it on something like, you know, um, say a personal trainer um, or um, a good healthy diet because in our environment junk food is a lot easier and cheaper to get than healthy food um, but it is it's so crucial and I see this as a and I'm just 27 which is not that old but I, I can see the difference in my own body from when I was 18 to when like you know 10 years later um, of the things I could do and I would heal the next day if I tried like some mad thing and the next day I would just be fine and now I see that I have that body pain lasting for a week longer and I'm like am I getting old <laughs> but and then I think about oh shit if I were trying to do these things at like 40 or 50 the time would take a lot more I mean it would take a lot more time and this is just for a very everyday lifestyle also you don't have to be a dancer or a sportsmen to want to chase health it's yeah. just a part but of but i see you life. spending hours in those gyms um those are just videos i mean i <laughs> <laughs> are you faking it no. <laughs> no i am going in fact i i have diligently attended sessions whenever i travel as well it's in an online capacity and that's i think that's the greatest thing i could have done for myself because 
as a dancer i did not take my physical health very seriously because i was just like i'll recover and then you stop recovering like i had this injury that just lasted a year and a half and i'm like it's not getting better and that's because you have to do correctives you have to do you have to walk a certain way with your core tucked so that you so i was learning how to walk all over again and so um yeah i try to show up to work out the same way as i would brush my teeth i don't try to miss it even if it means that i don't have a dumbbell i will pick up that gamla and lift that up and down Great job. um yeah. so just pick up whatever you have around you but just show up and the more you show up for your body for your mind uh, it it is rewarding in so many ways okay thank you very much